Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I am going to show you my finishes for the month of October. We're into the first week of November and I'm currently working, I completed one puzzle and I'm currently working on two right now. So I'm going to show you these. These are not going to be in the order in which I did them but I will show you all 17 of them. I'll try to show you the box and the image itself. And the first one, like I said, no particular order, is a Country Life Buffalo Puzzle. Gonna try to avoid the glare. And it's by Olga and it's called Bell's Farm. I tried to do a few autumn jigsaw puzzles and this is one of them that I was able to do. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pop the image up on the screen. What I loved about this puzzle was I had, I believe I had done one autumn puzzle in uh, September, but I went through my stash to see what I could find for October for autumn puzzles because I don't celebrate holidays, but I do enjoy autumn. I do enjoy pumpkins and pumpkin flavored things. So with this having pumpkins and apples and things of that nature, it was a perfect puzzle to work on for October. The next Country Life puzzle was also a bit of a fall vibe. It's, it's a country store puzzle. This is Country Life Country Store, and I'm just looking for the artist. This is Edward, and this one also had pumpkins, so therefore it went in my October stash. Again, I'm gonna pop my image up on the screen. This was great because I've done maybe two or three puzzles very similar to this with a store, with signs, and the signage, and all the different words. So this puzzle was pretty simple to put together because once I did the sky, then I did the words, and then I just had to fill in the cars and the pumpkins, and voila, it was done. So I enjoyed this one, Country Store, 1,000 Pieces, just like the previous one was 1,000 Pieces. The next two puzzles I'll show you because it's just the way I had them stacked is, well, put it on this side, Steve Land from Unified Pieces. Now, I did start this puzzle in September, and I finished it around the first week of October, but I waited a week or so for the missing piece from the company. So they provided me with the missing piece, and then I was able to make a video. In fact, every single puzzle you see in this video now has its own video on this channel. So anyway, this is Steve Lynn. I love the Unified Pieces puzzles. You can see how sturdy and durable the box is. It, they're amazing. This artist is Naftali Rogers, and it's an Afro-Caribbean artist based in the Highlands. And I read a little bit about his bio when I made this video. And if you like Stevie Wonder, then of course you're going to love this puzzle. But if you like quality, 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 not just in the packaging, but in the puzzle itself, the feel of the pieces and the, the, the click technology that goes into these pieces, and then what Unified Pieces stands for, then I highly recommend these puzzles. They are on the pricier side, so why don't you go ahead, for those of you who do celebrate holidays, and put this on your Christmas list. And that way you won't feel so guilty having such a quality puzzle that might be too expensive otherwise. My next um, unified pieces puzzle is a 500 piece puzzle called Castanaut or The Castanaut. Now this was sent to me because I was missing a piece from Steve Land and Gamaliel, who is the CEO of uh, Unified Pieces asked me if I wanted yet another puzzle. This would make the fourth complimentary puzzle that I received from Unified Pieces. So when you look at my uh, uh, backlog of videos, you'll notice that all of the Unified Pieces puzzles, and here's the logo, all say review. They are reviewed for this channel and hopefully to encourage you to get the puzzle. This was an easy peasy puzzle. Very, very easy. 500 pieces, number one. Number two, again, the quality is, is, is second to none. And then once I sorted out the rainbow color of the spacesuit, 
I just threw it together. And then there's a little bit of a gradient in the way the sky looks in the different areas. So this was a lot of fun to put together. These puzzles I do not want to glue. And now I have four of them because they are puzzles that I know I want to redo one day. Then I have four Evo puzzles, but we're going to just show those at the end since I've got two at the bottom over on this side. So we're going to move over to this White Mountain Sunset Cabin puzzle. Okay, I'm trying to avoid the glare again, but it is evening in Massachusetts, so therefore I need the lights on. So anyway, this Sunset Cabin, this jigsaw puzzle is from by Dominic Davison, who is one of my favorite puzzle artists and also one of my favorite diamond painting artists. And so I got this puzzle, Sunset Cabin. And if I remember correctly, there's another puzzle that I wanted to get that's similar to this. And I may have gotten it, but now I'm drawing a blank. But this one here, this 500 piece puzzle, to me, these are very easy because I'm a sky person. I do sky in five or 10 minutes. It doesn't matter if the sky is only a portion of the top or a bigger area. Sky is just something that I grew up doing. My mom used to do 2,000 and 5,000 piece puzzles when I was a child and she hated the sky. Always had me do it. So when I would do the sky, I would get really, I mean, because I did the sky so much as a child, as an adult, it's still my favorite part of the jigsaw puzzle. I did get a little caught up in the trees. I really did. And, you know, but that's okay because it's for the pleasure of solving the puzzle. The lake was very easy, the cabin on the lake and the boat, and then there's a little red truck in in this area right here. So this was a great puzzle and I'm glad I got to put it together. This is the last puzzle that I did in October. And I know I said I was gonna be on this side, so let's be consistent. This Geo Toys puzzle is called Metro Puzzle Chicago. Now, if you watched my video for this puzzle and for another puzzle, one that I completed in November, so I won't show you that until the end of October, uh, end of November or early December, you'll see that these are transit map puzzles of the city of Chicago. And that's what this is, a colorful transit map jigsaw puzzle with some Chicago landmarks from from landmarks from the city of Chicago. I did have to pause and restart the video. Now, this puzzle was very, very hard to put together, but I, I just have to show you something. Look at the poster. The poster, am I right side up? No, oh, I'm sorry. The poster is basically the same size as the jigsaw puzzle. So what I did is I used the pre-existing folds that the poster came in and as I worked part of the puzzle I would just refold the puzzle and just I just kept going to it like that so I never had to work with it like this you know this great big poster but I was able to do it like that and I'm going to pause the video to show you something else give me one moment okay I paused the video to show you that I glued this puzzle for Tony. We decided where we're going to hang it, but he works at night and I was going to hang it last night. I even put the first command strip on it, which you can see right there. But I decided, no, it, this is for him. He can hang it. So I glued it with Mod Podge and it's ready to go on the wall along with the other transit map puzzle that I completed for the month of um, November. But I don't generally glue many of my puzzles but in this case i had to because this was special so again it came with a great poster in fact because of this poster being like a real map i'm going to give the poster to my husband as well as the puzzle itself okay let's see what's next um i'll show you another 500 piece puzzle this is an americana puzzle blackbirds roost at mill creek 
It's a Child's Wysocki Jigsaw Puzzle. I got this one used and all the pieces were there. And it was only a 500 piece puzzle. And if you look at it, now let's just throw the image. I'm gonna throw the image on the screen. If you look at it and you look at all that green and the oranges and the pumpkins and the trees and then the, the fish shop and so forth, you would think it would be a very difficult puzzle. But I, it was just a breeze. Why? Because it's a Charles Wysocki jigsaw puzzle. And I'm very favorable to his puzzles, which I'm going to show you two, two more of his puzzles in just one moment. And so when I do his puzzles, even though they're going to be very challenging, they're always so gratifyingly satisfying. Okay, gratifyingly satisfying. They are also satisfying and gratifying how about that so i really enjoyed this americana blackbirds roost at mill creek and i don't think if i ever get rid of some of my puzzles because i may never do them again i probably won't get rid of any child's wise hockey puzzles speaking of child's wise hockey what's next what's next here is pumpkin hollow now this is the second of this so we're going to go back i'm going to tell you why in a moment this is the first heavy, heavy, heavy 1,000 piece Waisaki puzzle that I did, Butternut Farms. I'll show you Pumpkin Hollow in a second. The reason I'm showing you this puzzle first is because I had two of these puzzles that were similar with lots and lots of pumpkins. And because they had lots and lots of pumpkins, I was like, I don't know which one I wanna do first. I wanted to do the more challenging one first and the simpler one next. And if you look at both of them, it's kind of hard to ascertain, which I'm going to just block my face for a minute. If you look at both of them, it would be very difficult to determine which one would be more challenging. So I figured this would be more challenging, so I chose this first. And now it was challenging it by <laughs> no stretch of the imagination because you had it. I, I'm going to take the image down if I put the image up in the first place. Uh, you had the pumpkins down here and then you had the pumpkins up there. We're gonna skip the image because I wanna to talk to you about this puzzle. So because we had pumpkins in two areas, I knew that it was gonna be a challenge, but at some point it dawned on me that all the pumpkins obviously have stems. The stems were obviously upright. So once I turned the puzzle pieces with the orange pumpkin pieces upright, they went into place really quickly down here. So I figured, great, since that went together in just a few minutes, I thought I would work on these pumpkins. Why? Because they are all the same color and the stem is upright. I couldn't get that section of the puzzle done. I had to just put those pieces back into a tray and work on the other areas of the puzzle. And that is the last part of the puzzle that I was able to complete. So I did choose the more challenging puzzle first, okay? So again, this is Butternut Farms, a 1,000 piece Waisaki puzzle. And I apologize for not being consistent on which side I'm showing you the puzzle. Okay, I had to restart the video. My cats wanted catnip, believe it or not. They saw it and one of the cats was able to get it down. So I had to go sprinkle it. Okay, this pumpkin hollow puzzle I looked at it the same way as I looked at this other one. And now I'm a little confused as to which one I did first. But I ran into the same problem on both puzzles. So if I'm telling you the story wrong, the problem existed in the exact same manner. I'm thinking once I gathered all the puzzle pieces, which I'm just, you know, circling with this box. Once I gathered these puzzle pieces here, I thought, oh, great. I'll just turn the stems up right and do them. Nope. Just like... With the other puzzle, I had to do those pumpkins last. With this puzzle, I had to do these pumpkins last. Doing these pumpkins here, just like with the previous puzzle, that was easier and it got challenging as I got up there. But here's the thing when it comes to me and jigsaw puzzles. The more challenging a puzzle is, the more joy it brings to me because it gives me time to spend and to savor as I work on the puzzles. I love it. It, it, it It's... A feeling that I cannot explain unless you're another jigsaw puzzle lover and then you'll know what it feels like when you spend time with a puzzle that has an image that you enjoy. 
And then the fact that it's a Charles Wysocki puzzle, and I think I have 30 or so of his jigsaw puzzles. It's, it was a win-win. I loved it. Now, this was supposed to be a September puzzle. It's called Happy, Happy Hour 2, a vivid collection puzzle from Buffalo, 1,000 pieces. But I could not find it when I was putting my puzzle stack together for September. So I thought that I mis uh, mistakenly entered this into the puzzle database, but that wasn't the case. I found it after the fact, so therefore I included it in October. The funny thing is, when I did the puzzle and I did the video, I said, I don't drink. But then one day Tony was going out and I said, hey, could you pick up some Mike's Hard Lemonade? I mean, the, the alcohol content is minimal and I can only handle one a day anyway. So I guess technically I do drink, but it's so little that it still doesn't really count. But still, I love this. Why? Because it's so bright. It's so vivid. And that's something that gives you energy when you have something bright and vivid and it just it just gives you energy then i moved on again these are in no particular order but another puzzle i did was my one of three masterpieces jigsaw puzzles now my story with masterpieces is this i happened to see a puzzle that i'm going to, going to show you actually I'll, I'll show it to you first i saw this puzzle and I thought of Marshall Fields. It's called Walden's Manor House. So I'm like, oh, that kind of reminds me. So then I saw Fields Department Store, one that I'm working on right now. And then I found out that the inside out line of masterpieces included four puzzles. Fields Department Store, Walden's Manor House, Sophia's Doll House in City something, City something. I can't think of the second word. And so I decided to go ahead and try. I, 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 it was a toss up. Was I going to do Fields Department Store first or was I going to do this first? So this one is the one I chose to do first. And it was pretty easy to put together. You, there were some things about it that were complicated you know, but I loved it. And the meaning behind this puzzle is thinking of those PBS shows like Upstairs, Downstairs. In fact, the artist, Art Poulin, says right in here that that was the mainstay in his household as he was growing up. And the differences in the class between those who was added upstairs and those downstairs was a big influence as to why he created this puzzle. So I love this one. I did another Masterpieces puzzle and I had pulled this out. I'm just being a little bit random and off off, off the beaten track right now. Is Dinner at Grandma's. Why did I want this puzzle? Because almost every weekend as a child, we went to visit my grandmother in Reedville, Massachusetts. We grew up in Dorchester, but we visited in Reedville. And those weekends with my great grandmother were weekends that I will always remember. And that's what gave me a warm vibe when I saw this puzzle. So I was really glad to do it. Uh, of course, I don't remember what the house looked like from the outside, but I can see so much of Readville in my head. Like for example, there was a country store. And let's say that this was my great grandmother's house and the store is way back there. My great grandmother and us kids would walk all the way to the store. So it made me think of the Waltons. Oh my goodness, it just gave me such a warm feel. 550 pieces. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I'm really enjoying the Masterpieces brand and I just, I've got a lot of them now. Well, not a lot, but I've got about eight or nine of them now. And then another one I did, and I don't remember which I did first of the three masterpieces i really don't without grabbing my spreadsheet but i did this masterpieces farmer's market and i did it because it's a fall puzzle and i purchased it because it's a fall puzzle and this came in a bigger box and there were things about this puzzle that oh now that i think of it i think this was the third masterpieces because it says linen and i'm like why does it say linen on the corner of the box and it also says premium gallery 
Well, I found out that the random shape pieces in this puzzle were of superior quality. As good as this puzzle was and the Walden's Manor House that I showed you, the quality of this was just that much higher. And so this, I guess, is a special part of their line. I don't have any other linen or masterpiece gallery puzzles. I do have other Heartland puzzles and uh, Inside Out puzzles, and I want the Cutaways puzzles, but I will be looking for more in the linen or Masterpiece Gallery line because the quality is exceptional. This was great to put together. It was a little bit of sky, just like maybe one row. And then you have the houses in uh, the white, the yellow, and the gray. So it was pretty cool to put together. I did struggle a little bit here with the, the uh, farmer's market, but that's okay. We need the challenge, right? Okay, now, I think I did four, I do have to grab my spreadsheet because I have four Ebu puzzles out. One, two, yes, two, three, four. Okay, I just wanna make sure I did all four of them in October and I did. So in no particular order, we have this one here, which is called Artist Gallery and no, Artist Studio and this puzzle, the box was damaged, but there were no missing pieces. So I just put a little piece of tape so that pieces wouldn't fall out when the puzzles boxes get moved around. So I love evil puzzles. In fact, someone asked me if I would do an updated video of all of my evil puzzles, which are currently at 49. And so I have to decide if I want to pull them off the shelf or if I would just show you images of the puzzles. But this is one of them that I did in um, October. And I thought it would be easy because I noticed that all the palettes are different shapes, squares, rectangles, uh, wedges, and round. And I was right. So once I realize the different and I'm just gonna just put this close once I realized you know the square palette there the rectangle palette there the round and the wedges and then you have the round right here super super easy love putting it together every ebu puzzle has a poem on the back which I read every time I put up a video I loved it then I thought oh I'm gonna do this really difficult one cats at work Okay, this Ibu puzzle, I thought with all the black was going to throw me for a loop. Okay, put the image up for this one. I was rather surprised that these cats are in all different configurations. Just as you see me turning the box around, let's just, let's take the image. Up. You see the cats are oriented this way, then that way, then this way, that way. So once I figure out the orientation of the cats and I chose color pieces per cat, purple, pink, blue, green, the green leaves. Once I grabbed those like groups of pieces, it went together swimmingly. The black, all that black you see, the black was always attached to a piece of the color of the cat or a piece of the color of the leaf. So I didn't. I didn't find it super challenging and I loved it. Loved it. I love Ebu. I am a fan. Yes, their puzzles are very, very glossy. Your lighting has to be, you know, at the right angle. But once you do that, if you like the brand as much as I do, you let that, that doesn't go anywhere as far as bothering me, as far as the glossiness or the glare. Now, I should have, I just had my sense with them on the shelf but I should have kept them there's a series on evil called the kitchen series and it was blue kitchen purple kitchen and green kitchen and I think I may may have made a video on that or talked about it in a previous video well I discovered that there was a fourth puzzle in their kitchen series called what's cooking which is giving you a tremendous amount of glare speaking of glare so when I discovered that there was a 500 piece puzzle, I bought this and I worked on it the same day it arrived from Amazon. Now, you would think that this manically busy puzzle would drive me crazy, but this is where my brain excels. And I'm going to avoid the glare by throwing the image on the screen. I don't know what 
the synapses are connecting in my brain. But when you see a puzzle like this and you present it to me, lickety split. This is easier than a Waisaki. This is easier than a uh, country life, country living. I, I just don't get it. So I, I love this. And then this was fun. Okay, image coming down. You have all these animals cooking in different configurations. You have a giraffe cooking. You have hedgehog, hedgehogs. I'm sorry. You have hippopotamus. You've got all these beautiful animals. I loved this puzzle. I really, really did. Now, my last puzzle that I'm going to show you in this video, which I think I've made like five or six clips, so I've got to weld it all together, but it's called Cats at Cats and Windows. Okay? Show you on this side. Trying to avoid the glare. Okay, we'll just put the image up. This Cats and Windows puzzle had me for three days. I thought... 12 windows, 12 cats, right? No. It may be 12 windows, but if I'm not mistaken, there was 20 some odd cats. It was, an, it was more cats than I thought. Even though the windows are different, it was not easy. It wasn't easy. And maybe it's because of what I was trying to do. Now I'm going to put the box here. I wanted to work corner to corner to corner to corner and go like that but I couldn't do it I could not cull enough I did get this one done pretty easily but I could not call these other pieces out in order to stay in a pattern the way that I thought my brain would allow me to work in and the reason that I could not is because as I would say, looking for the pieces for this, I would see a, the white pieces for this white cat. So I would throw those pieces together. Or I would see the pieces for up here and I would throw those pieces together. So at some point I'm like, you know what? There's not gonna be a pattern. We're just gonna put this puzzle together. And that's what I did. And like I said, it took me a couple of days. And when I say days, it's working on and off throughout the day, going to bed about 10 or 11 so I can read and then picking it up the next day and sometimes even doing more than one puzzle at the same time. So this one was more of a challenge than I had expected. So that is it. I can't show you the puzzles all together because of the way I put them to the side, but they are right here. But those are the 17 puzzles that I did in October. And I believe I have 17 puzzles picked out for November. And they are behind me, and I will make that video probably tomorrow. I don't think I will make that video today. But I wanted to just give you my roundup for October. Um, there were some mistakes in this video, so I'm going to try to edit it a little bit smoothly so that it doesn't disconcert you as far as watching it. But if you do watch the whole video, I want to thank you, and I will be back with more. You have a good one. Bye-bye.